Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? In today's video, I'm talking about a situation that finally happened. I got an allergic reaction to a product that I was testing for this channel, mind you. Um, more specifically, I had an allergic contact dermatitis reaction. And while I'm not trying to point any fingers as to who or what, specifically did it, I have a pretty good idea who, what it was, so. But why, I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna get into that. Before we get into this video, I'm gonna ask you to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, give the video a thumbs up because I went through a week's worth of allergic reaction for you guys. Thank you very much. Um, also, comment down below if this ever happened to you, what caused it, what you did, just because <laughs> it was a struggle, not gonna lie. So also before I get into this, I'm gonna say I am not an esthetician, I am not a dermatologist, therefore everything that I'm saying to you is from the guards of this happened to me, this is what I did in my situation to remedy what was going on to me. It's not medical treatment, I'm not prescribing anything to you, therefore take that for what it is. Don't sue me if something goes wrong. So what is contact dermatitis? Well, I had to Google a lot of these things. Therefore, everything you're gonna hear for the most part, I mean, trying to figure things out was Google, YouTube, and the internet. So. But with contact dermatitis, there's a few different variations of it. You have irritant contact dermatitis, you have allergic contact dermatitis, and you got photo contact dermatitis. Basically, the breakdown of it is irritant contact dermatitis happens pretty instantly upon contact with the specific irritant or product. Allergic contact dermatitis tends to happen a few days after initial contact slash after repeated use. And then photo contact dermatitis, I'm gonna actually read the definition from the internet. It's a photoallergic reaction generally present as eczema, also called dermatitis, so just know that now. Dermatitis reaction is really similar to eczema. Confined to the areas in contact with the chemical and then exposed to the sun. So basically, whatever is on you, it might not necessarily cause a reaction, but once it's exposed to a high amount of UV rays, that's when you really see the reaction. Note that. And actually, a lot of this came about because Susan Yara, who follows me on Instagram, once I posted about the reaction, she was like, oh no, is it this, is it this, or is it this? And she basically kind of explained those things to me. And that was the initial onset of like, oh, this is contact dermatitis. It's not just like some random, just so you know, my dad is someone who, when he gets allergic reactions, which he's allergic to everything, he has very, very extreme physical reactions to things when he's allergic to them. Therefore, to me, this was kind of a normal thing just because genetically I'm more disposed to that. Considering the fact that I had to consider, okay, I'm having this reaction. I know it's to a skincare thing. I had to look back and think, what were things that I added into my routine recently? And that's why I always say on this channel, whenever you introduce new products into your routine, do not do them all at once in quick succession after each other. Give yourself time to try one thing at a time. See how your skin reacts to it. If it's good, go on to the next thing and add that in. But you need to allow yourself to do that. There was only one item who I introduced into my routine within a 48 to 72 hour window before me getting the reaction in like its full fledged form. On top of that, I had to really consider where was I reacting? And the full fledged of the reaction was basically my full face, the front and the back of my ears and my neck. I also had, a, a not a lot, it wasn't considerable, but I noticed like a bunch of bumps on my arms and I really thought about why are those there. And I realized I use those areas to blot my face when I get oily because I don't touch my face with my fingers. So, so I had to consider, okay, what were things that I put in those areas that were newer and like there were some new things that I used for example I talked about how I brought these two items to my skincare routine and these were introduced about a week about a week before the initial uh reaction started and I was like oh no what if it's those but then I'm like I don't put those on my ears and on top of that I tend to put hydrators in other parts of my body and I was, wasn't seeing anything happening there either so I'm like wait what happened to my ears and my neck it's not makeup because I don't put makeup on my neck ever and sunscreen was the one answer and that's why I'm like 99% sure it was this one sunscreen that did it to me. Mind you, I know it wasn't a filter in the sunscreen. A lot of times for sunscreens, a filter can cause a reaction. And the only filter in that one sunscreen was zinc oxide, which is something I use a lot in other sunscreens. It's in every physical sunscreen that I've been testing for this channel, in my brown skin friendly sunscreen series, and I haven't seen a reaction since. So it basically comes down to a potential botanical extract that was in this sunscreen that upon UV exposure had a reaction because I wore it in my house. And mind you, every sunscreen I test for my video series, I do go outside, they do get direct UV exposure. But when I first started testing this one, I mean, we're in middle quarantine, I was just in my house kind of like lazing about. There was a couple days where I was in direct UV light. We went out, we went to kind of take a walk and a stroll. And it was in 
in the like towards the end of that where I realized like, oh, my face is looking kind of bumpy. And the next day I had to go to work for the first time and I was in direct UV light and I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm kind of itchy. My skin's really bumpy and I'm itchy. And that was the night that reaction like really kicked in. So at this point, I know I have allergic contact dermatitis slash photo contact dermatitis to a sunscreen. I cut it out entirely. And that's pretty much once you can figure out what those factors are that are causing those reactions, you cut that out. I'm gonna to explain to you what I did to calm slash heal the reaction. In reality, you can't heal an allergic reaction. You just kind of have to let it do its course. You can take things to kind of expedite the process and really calm and soothe the inflammation and irritation in the skin, but the reactions happen. Your skin needs to kind of, uh, I calmed it. I did things to soothe, alleviate, repair, and nourish. I guess that's really all you can do, honestly. But mind you, a big part on top of taking out the irritant factor is also you have to kind of TLC your skin. That means no actives, no treatments, no exfoliants, no retinol, none of that. You gotta pare things down to the bare minimum. And for me, those were cleansing, hydrating slash moisturizing, and then protecting my skin. I mean, beyond that, there was other things I did as well, like the actual things I had to like Google and figure out like, shit, this is happening, what do I do? Uh, first and foremost, it was a topical steroid cream to help calm down the itching. My boyfriend went out to the pharmacy and got me an anti-itching cream, which basically is called like an analgesic. And looking at the ingredients, the active ingredient in that is the same exact antihistamine that is uh, present in Benadryl. So I was like, oh, okay. So basically it's gonna kind of take down that inflammation a little bit, stop the itching. I also took Allegra to kind of calm down the allergic reaction as well, oral medication, also calamine lotion. If you've ever had chicken pox or some sort of rash, you know, calamine lotion really helps to kind of calm down itching. That being said, the vehicle that the calamine lotion was in was really drying. Granted, I did it on top of a lot of rich creams. It just really dried out my skin. And mind you, because this was like an eczema-like reaction, my skin was dry. It sucked up every and anything I put on it. Within a few hours, my skin was dry again. And I also had to use an ice pack to take down a lot of the swelling. I, you can see in the footage that my boyfriend's gonna input in the video, my eyes, the second day I woke up, were so puffy, I couldn't really open my eyes. My whole face was red and inflamed. It wasn't cute. So the ice really had to come in to soothe a lot of the irritation, calm down the puffiness, and take down the irritation a little bit. So beyond the Google remedies that we did, I also had to consider what are skincare ingredients that I have that I know aren't gonna harm me that I can still use to help the reaction. So I had to think of what ingredients do I have, what ingredients do I own, and what products that aren't gonna exacerbate this reaction, help to kind of bring things down, soothe my skin, not burn, because trust me, a lot of shit burns when your skin's really sensitive. And again, I am not a dermatologist. I am not someone who's recommending these ingredients to you. These are the ingredients that I know work for me that worked for me and that helped kind of soothe a lot of things, but I'm in no way prescribing these to you. First and foremost, Centella Asiatica. I talk about Centella Asiatica on this channel so much, so much. Having the products on hand was no problem. Using those products on the daily was no problem. I talk about the Sikapir line from Dr. Jar all the time. These are stable products. This is the calming mist. This is the gel cream, which this came in clutch for a lot of the reaction because a lot of the worst parts of it were around my eyes. And I needed something to moisturize around my eyes without burning my skin because it was bad. But I also have sheet masks and sheet masks during the situation are really great things to use because you can refrigerate these and they're cold and they have the benefits that you need from the active ingredients. This is the VT Sika Plus Care Sheet Mask, which has Centella Asiatica. And this is the Nature Republic Real Comforting Sheet Mask in the Madagascar flavor scent, which Madagascar is a derivative of Centella Asiatica as well. Also at this point, part of the protecting my skin is wearing sunscreen and sunscreen is a mask. Granted, a sunscreen caused my reaction. It wasn't the sunscreen ingredients that caused the reaction. It was a botanical extract in the sunscreen, but Perito, coming in clutch. These are the Centella Green Level Safe Sun. This is the unscented one, but I also did use the scented one because it didn't burn my skin. But the Centella in this is a great uh, ingredient to help calm my skin. And then I also use the Comfy Water, which is a physical sunscreen filter. This is what I use, which kind of assured me that it wasn't the zinc oxide. This also has Centella ingredients as well. These have direct Centella as well as derivatives of it to kind of boost that soothing component. So don't forget your sunscreen. Because even though sunscreen caused a reaction, my skin was still very photosensitive. So I needed to put on sunscreen. Another ingredient is Allantoin. Allantoin is a really great ingredient ingredient and use a lot in Korean beauty. It's just another one of those anti-inflammatory soothing ingredients that also has skin protecting factors. It is present in both of the sheet masks that I mentioned as well. Adenosine. Adenosine, similar to Centella in the Allantoin, another soothing agent. Adenosine is in a lot of my skincare products. And I actually had to look it up when I was looking through what products I could use. An ingredient that's in my Secret Key Starting Treatment Essence. It's in pretty much all of the Dr. Jart Sika products that I mentioned already. So that was a plus. Another ingredient, niacinamide. Niacinamide, I mentioned in my Simplified Gold Active Standards video, is one of those like superstar ingredients that does literally everything. But in this instance, it was a great ingredient to have that was kind of inactive and kind of maintaining some benefits I needed in my skin, but also it has the brightening properties, soothing properties, anti-inflammatory properties, and skin 
berry repairing properties as well. And then a newer one to this whole mix is mugwort. I mentioned starting the mugwort essence. I was kind of concerned this actually was a potential cause of my reaction. Spot tested it, it wasn't. But mugwort is one of those ingredients that A, helps to really hydrate and nourish the skin, but also really soothing, came to find out, so. Great ingredient and plus this is a lot more viscous than my starting treatment essence so i really felt that this on top of the starting treatment essence under moisturizer really helped to lock in the hydration that i needed on top of that there was just other staple ingredients i really needed to make sure my skin was nourished my hot alabo goku gen lotion staple i needed that hyaluronic acid boost in my skin when i tell you my skin was parched my skin was parched can i get you anything Bloody! And then Serape Hydrating Cleanser. I mentioned this in pretty much all my skincare videos. This is an everyday staple in my routine. In reality, cleansing is really important in your skincare routine. That being said, I need to be able to use a cleanser and not feel stripped and not feel tight afterwards not feel burning, not feel like my I was compromising my skin in any way. This was it, she was the girl. I use her every day anyway, so it wasn't like anything new that I had to go buy. No matter what my skincare concerns are, she comes in clutch. And then this sunscreen, this is the Claire's Midday Blue UV Shield. I tested this in one of my other videos. This has guaiazoline in it, and guaiazoline is one of those other components that is kind of soothing. So when I was in the rough of my skincare situation, I tried this out and it actually brought down a lot of the inflammation. And the key with a lot of these things was it didn't burn my skin. As I mentioned, because my skin was so compromised, sometimes even putting on a moisturizer would cause the areas that were really inflamed to just burn and this i can put on my eyes around my eyes on top of all these creams and it was perfectly fine it didn't burn and then also the advantage of calming inflammation down and last but not least i'm going to throw this in the mix this is the biosan squalane oil as i mentioned one of the key things when you have these kind of reactions is you need to have something rich and creamy and emollient on your skin to kind of soften the dryness of your skin. Cause at one point at the end of the day, after one of my like wear tests in the midst of this, mind you, my skin looked like sandpaper. So like I needed something that was going to be emollient and occlusive to lock in all of that hydration. This oil came in clutch, mainly because some of my moisturizers, even my most gentle, like straight to the point moisturizers, my Neutrogena Hydra Boost. My boyfriend had me use a Cerave Skin Renewing Night Cream cause he was like, oh, it's going to be gentle. It's gonna be rich, it's gonna help, that burns. I was in the midst of a Biosan sunscreen test, which go check it out if you haven't watched it yet. And I was using the Squalane plus Omega Repair Cream from Biosans, that burns. This was one of the only like occlusive moisturizing factors that did not burn that I could use on my skin. And it made my skin feel so good when I put this on at the end of the night. So this was a really great thing to have. And with that, that was how I kind of got over my reaction. It was bad. There was no way to really expedite it. I was actually kind of concerned this would be like a two week long ordeal, but it actually pretty much went to completely down within seven days. But the key really was just TLC, cut down to the bare minimum, and then find ingredients and then my skincare products that were really soothing in vehicles that wouldn't compromise the reaction even more. Some of these, like the Dr. Jar items, have other botanical extracts in them. So utilizing those in the midst of this reaction when my skin was already highly sensitive was a potential risk. But those are products that A, I kind of tested out to see if they would work. B, were products I used on the regular, so I knew they wouldn't necessarily exacerbate the reaction even further. And C, I was willing to take that risk. I needed it, and these are products that I could put on my skin that helped, that didn't burn. As soon as I knew they weren't gonna make things worse, I was okay with it. With that, just remember, if this ever happens to you, calm down, be chill. Consider the fact that it's just an allergic reaction. As long as you're not going to anaphylactic shock, you're good. Take things that are going to soothe your skin, calm your skin down, be mindful to continuously nourish and hydrate and moisturize your skin while also considering to wear sunscreen and figure out what the factor was that caused the reaction and cut that out completely. So yeah, if you like this video, if you found it really informative and useful, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so that you know when I post other skincare content on my channel, which is pretty much all I post at this point. In the comments down below again, if this ever happened to you, tell me what caused it, why it happened, and the things that you use that you found helped you a lot to get through this, just because if other viewers are watching this for that specific reason, they could find your recommendations really useful. And with that, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.